ABC Weatherland. Here's Rob's forecast. Welcome back. Well, the heat is certainly on today. The hottest day for the calendar year of 2019 hit 92, uh, but we'll probably break that number in the weeks ahead for sure. We might even hit 93 one day this weekend or for Memorial Day, so it's getting hot for sure, but at least the dew points a little bit lower out there, so heat indices still below 100. And with the heating this afternoon, a little bit of a surprise. We did have a shower pop up. Let's take a look at the radar, and it is quiet across Lafayette Parish, but a couple of hours ago we saw a shower pop up and I can't help but think that uh, the extra moisture coming in from the Atchafalaya Basin and uh, over by Lake Martin and then you have the heating the the uh, what we call urban heat island effect over Lafayette allowing for some uplift and a cumulus cloud got going and a shower was produced and it continued to move off to the north and west and then it diminished so that tells you there was something sustaining it more in Lafayette than uh, more so than anywhere else in their last vestige of that shower by the Point Blue area and just to the west northwest of the Ville Platte area. This shower will die a lonely death shortly and just a few other spotty showers where we have that extra humidity factor out in the Chafalai Basin and then off to the east coming off of uh, Lake Bourne and Lake Pontchartrain. There are a few showers, but that's about it. But once again today we look at the big picture here. We have this big upper level low. This gyre out in the Rockies still producing snow from California to the Colorado and Wyoming. Rockies and then east of there, uh, severe weather setting up west of where it was last night. A lot of uh, tornadoes and damage and fatalities across portions of Missouri. Today, also more severe weather pushing to the east in the Ohio River Valley. Now, notice this area, notice this area where the heavy rains are, and they will continue uh, for the next several days. And we're going to show you some imagery. This is just the flood watches and warnings that are going, the river flood warnings, and they all feed into the Mississippi. Mississippi River and we've been saying you add more rainfall you add more trouble and this is the European model showing the rainfall in the same areas that will eventually flood into the Mississippi so uh, that's why the opening of the spillway is certainly being considered and I think in my mind is going to be likely you can see the Red River already in a flood stage uh, the Mississippi has been in flood stage uh, going back to January just about and uh, we will have to watch how things get divvied up. Uh, normally 70% of the water that uh, comes at the confluence of the Mississippi and the Red River and the Atchafalaya, 70% goes down the Mississippi, 30% is thrown into the Atchafalaya River, but with high water coming down through the Red and the Mississippi, that uh, combination or that distribution will likely change. And where is the floodgates? That's farther to the south, just north of Morganza. That's why it's called the Morganza Spillway. This is the way it looks on the map. Here's an actual picture of the spillway after the floodgates were uh, closed uh, going back in 2011, but it gives you a real good idea of what it looks like. And there's the Mississippi River. If it gets up close to the top of this, that's when uh, they uh, aren't able to open up the floodgates safely. So as the river gets close to the top of this structure, those floodgates will gradually be opened. And then the question is, what happens thereafter? Well, water spills into this farmland that is in the floodway. It's happened in 73, happened in 2011 as well. And the question is, how much will the Atchafalaya Basin absorb? That was a question last time where the Atchafalaya, uh, uh, much of the swamp was very dry, so it didn't uh, see, we didn't see a lot of flooding and a lot of camps flooding. And then you have to worry about backwater flooding around some of the levees and then how much gets into the basin and what will be the effects for a town such as Stevensville. We don't know until the U.S. US Army Corps of Engineer releases its inundation information and we may not get that for several days. And just look at how much of the water comes down the Mississippi from uh, anywhere east to the Rockies through the Ohio Valley. It all eventually funnels down the Mississippi in our part of the world. So we're on the receiving end uh, when it's a very a wet spring across the nation's midsection. Locally, it's a quiet weather pattern, mostly sunny skies in the afternoon, mostly cloudy skies in the morning, but mostly sunny 
in the afternoon each and every day with highs pushing into the lower 90s. So should be 73 74 tonight. Not quite as warm as last night, which was 76 91 the high tomorrow. So a hot finish to the week for sure. And as we head into the weekend, ridge of high pressure dominating through Monday begins to break down toward the mid and latter part of next week, and that should open up the door for at least the chance of scattered afternoon showers and thunderstorms, but they won't cool us off a whole lot as daytime highs are expected to stay in the 90s. But as we go into the weekend, 92, 93 degrees for your Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So some poolside action will be uh, probably required if you want to try mm -hmm. to stay cool or just have yeah. the AC Better running in the pool. Yeah, exactly. Than out for right, sure. Right, exactly. Thanks, Rob.